What's up, guys? It's uh, week 12, episode 12 of the All In CrossFit podcast. I'm Jared. This is Chris. Coming at you this week, regional start this weekend. So with that comes uh, more local competitions, and that's what's going to be the topic this week. Uh, we're going to have Chris chime in on kind of some of his uh, ideas on what's good about him, what's bad about him, his thoughts on uh, various topics like that. But uh, let's uh, we'll go ahead and move on in. Um, so we've got – we just wrapped up a few that we had around here uh, with the benefit for the Lee County Humane Society. Mm-hmm. And so with the season coming up this summer, there's a lot more – around here so what are your just overall thoughts leading into this with more of our members going here and there they mentioned different competitions so you as a coach what is your thoughts uh, solely on this i think that uh that local competitions are, are awesome because i mean outside of the open most people don't have an opportunity to compete in crossfit because you know the majority of us don't make it to regionals we don't make it to the games and so it just gives everyone an opportunity to see you know, kind of where they where they stand against, you know, people in their area mm-hmm. without it, you know, like face-to-face, you know, because, I mean, we get to do the Open in our own gym at our, at, you know, at our own pace because we decide what time we're going to do it, what day we're going to do it, and then if we don't like our score the first time, we get to redo it. But, you know, being, like, in that live competition setting, I think really gives you an opportunity to test your fitness and, and to test your training, you know, because – for the most part, like, you know, we shouldn't be competing every day. You know, we've touched on that a couple mm-hmm. times on this podcast. But, yeah, a couple times. You know, we should be training, the, spending the, more, the majority of our time training and, you know, trying to perfect our movement and just overall become better CrossFitters. And these local competitions give us an opportunity to go out and test that, you know. Test it and have a little bit of fun. I think you and see have, that too. Yeah, and, like, the main thing should be to have fun. Yeah, so I think you see that too with regionals coming up. A lot of the athletes – if you look at their social media, a lot of them, like, you know, take down the volume because the competition's coming mm-hmm. up. Because it's like all the work that you put in leading up, like, you know, within a week's time, they're not going to make any crazy, right. you know, advances, any gains. And so these guys, that's what they're going out to do is, you know, it's already there. They've already put in the work. They've been in the gym. Now it's time to go and show it. So mm-hmm. it's time to go have fun. So for our members, I mean, that's a lot of positive things about doing local competition. So you would suggest that they – would go and do something. It's a chance to yeah. kind of like, I mean, to show off, really. Oh, it's, yeah. it's your chance think, then to compare. I think that everybody should do, should at least do one competition a year. Mm-hmm. If not, you know, one every quarter. Yeah. Because the cool thing about the, the whole CrossFit uh, competition scene is that there are hundreds of competitions you can do. I mean, it seems like nowadays almost every other weekend someone's hosting a competition. Yeah. So the opportunity is there. And, I mean, you see it all the time in other sports, like the match, like, for every, you know, golfer out there that watches the Masters tournament and they're like, you know, the Masters is like the granddaddy mm-hmm. of them all, kind of like the Rose Bowl. Yeah. But then you also have, like, the Duffner Classic. Mm-hmm. You know, you local have the local yeah, yeah, you have the local things yeah. for people to compete in to kind of see where they are, engage themselves. And so I think that everyone should do it at yeah. some point or another throughout the year because it, it's different, for one. It gets you outside of your own gym. You know, you're actually going to be judged by people – and there will be people watching you. And on top of that, the people that you're competing against are right next to you. Yeah. You know, it's not just the virtual leaderboard it's of true. the CrossFit Games Open. And so it takes you outside of your comfort zone to where you have to adapt. You know, like there's a different pressure in those situations that you either adapt to or you don't. And But either way, you find out something about yourself that you can bring back into the gym to help you get better. Yeah, I think one thing that we mentioned, we've mentioned several times on the podcast is uh, the community that's here. Mm-hmm. And so when we had the last competition that we went to over at uh, on the Plains, you know, we had several groups that represented all in, but we also had other members of our gym that came and supported. So, like, that was another great chance to build a community. To, I mean, like, honestly, that was just a blast no matter how we yeah. finished. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, it was, like you said, a, a great chance to kind of, like, size ourselves up with some of the local gyms that we don't get to see day in day out you know, mm-hmm. we work out with the same people here but that's you know another chance to see like you know like, okay well you know i've got this this and this i need to work on yeah but overall i mean it was i mean it was a lot of fun we had a great time several folks from the gym showed up and so i think that in and of itself maybe grab somebody that you don't work out with every day to do a competition mm-hmm. you know most of the time we pair up with our friends we pair up with somebody i mean you know and there's there's reasons to that yeah you know for Placing in competitions, right. you know, whatever it may be. But, you know, still at the same time, you know, grab somebody and find another competition that's going on. Oh, yeah. I mean, and there's just so many competitions, too, that, you know, if there just one is, 
you know, like the one that we d just did, it was a partner competition, mm -hmm. same sex and everything. And then there's some that that come up that may be you male, know, female, opt, male yeah. female, or mm -hmm. three-man team, four-man team, co-ed, yep. not being co-ed. So it just gives, I think it provides a lot of opportunities for us to to really take the community aspect of the gym to the next level. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I mean, like we all, for the most part, most people work out at the same time every day. Mm -hmm. You know, every now and then, like you may have some fluctuation with the afternoon or every now and then someone from the afternoon works out in the morning. But for the most part, you don't, you know, you work out at the same time, so you yeah. see the same people. And it just gives us an opportunity to expand the community and get to know more people inside of the community, as well as seeing other gyms and their community and being able to just be there and it's like one big fitness festival. You yeah, know? it's yeah. like the CrossFit competitions are like a lot of like-minded people too. Yeah, a lot of like-minded people. Oh yeah. And so that kind of touches on a lot of the the good things and positive things for competitions for our members doing competitions. Are there any like anything that you dislike about it? Anything negative? Any stigmas attached? Yeah, I mean a lot of the one the biggest thing that I find maybe like the biggest downfall downside to competitions is like people that take themselves too serious. Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, everyone <laughs> that I know of, you know, the, the majority of people that I know got into CrossFit because they wanted to be healthier. They wanted yeah, to lose yeah. some weight, you know, those, those types of things. They didn't get into it for the, for the competition aspect of it. So when you go to a competition and you see these people just taking it way too serious and being Johnny intense out there, and if a workout doesn't go their way, they're super depressed and they're down on themselves. I feel like that is the biggest downside because they're, they're missing the most important thing is like you're there to test yourself. Mm -hmm. Granted, you're competing against other people, but that the competition side of it is just to drive you to push harder for yourself, you know, to bring something out of you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think that's one of the biggest downfalls of it is that people take it too seriously and they put – too much, um, too much emphasis on it for the wrong reasons. You know, like they look at the outcome, like how they fare on the leaderboard as compared to, you know, did I give it my best shot? Right. Was that my best effort? And if you can say that you gave 100%, then that's a win, you know? Whether yeah. you finish first or last, it doesn't matter at that point. As long as you give it your best shot, then that should be enough and you should be happy with that. Yeah, I think, I think you know, you had – Oh, you go ahead. Uh, and I, well, go ahead. So I, was I know that the, with you, you had mentioned a lot of people that come in. It's it's just for overall health. So it's like for longevity, um, and so that's a chance for you to kind of like get in and compare yourself. But you also have a lot of people that are former athletes mm -hmm. that come into CrossFit. And so how do you combat that competitive nature? Because like I mean, you have to admit like we're competitive. Oh yeah. I mean this, that's how it's going to be. Like we and in a good way and in a bad way sometimes. So like yeah, it's gonna it's gonna happen. People are going to get upset, but you know. How do you control like that competitive nature over like you just like absolutely blowing up on yourself? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because like you're gonna want to push yourself. Right. Like you've been you've been training, you know, say like you have a competition coming up in three three months, you know, at the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. And so like we're gonna be training. Most of the time they release those the movements, the workouts leading up to it. You've been training for a while and then you get upset with yourself based off of the result. What if, you know, I mean, how do you how do you combat that from like having a competitive nature over somebody that's just like, you know, a head case? Yeah. Well, I think the, the first part of that is you've got to do like a, you really got to be honest with yourself and, and ask yourself, did I really put the work in? Mm -hmm. You know, and if you know that, I mean, like even with, um, like with the open, you know, like there's, I mean, I think it's like 15 movements now that you know are going to be in the open almost every year. They throw some new stuff in there every now and then, but there's 15 movements that are going to be in the open. And if you've been just spending the whole year, just doing the movement for the sake of doing it and not even worrying about, you know, becoming more efficient at it. You're just doing it to say, yep, I got it, check the box. Mm -hmm. and you're never trying to get better. Well, chances are you're not going to do as well in the open as you think you should because you didn't really get better over the year. You just were going through the motions. And so the same thing leading up to a competition, even when they announce the workouts, like once you see them, you still got to put the work in. Yeah. You know, you can't be upset with, the results that you get from work that you didn't do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so with that, I think that's the easiest way to keep people from getting upset. It's just, did you put the work in? If the answer is no, you can't be mad at yeah. yourself. But then just from like the side of it where, where you might lose, that's, you know, 
That's just drive you to work harder. Yeah, I think you see that a lot more with athletes on pretty much any sport, and you'll see it in CrossFit as well. There's a, lot, a lot of people are getting into more of like the sports psychology. Mm-hmm. And so it's what do you do for yourself? All you can do is what you've done up to at this point, like right. you've mentioned. You've, you've trained, you've done this. You know, you can only do what you're capable of, what your body's capable of. And, yeah, there may be times that you can push a little bit harder, do a little bit more. Maybe it's between the ears. Yeah. But you see so many more of these elite athletes that are starting to get to that point where they're like, okay, you know, don't look at who I'm going against. You know, it's just me versus what this workout is. Yeah. And so I think that's one of the tough things that it, that is to do, especially when you're first starting. Yeah. And I, just to add on top of that, because, you know, I talk about with the, with the high school baseball team, we talk a lot about, like, the mental game of baseball. And I always tell those guys, I'm like, the mental side will take care of itself mm-hmm. if you prepare yeah. in the way that you should. So, like, a guy that is swinging the bat really well, like, if he's, he's working hard in the, in the weight room and all of a sudden now he's hitting home runs instead of little weak fly balls, that guy's going to be pretty confident. Yeah. You know, and the, I think the same thing yeah. goes with fitness, too. Like, if you know that you're doing the things that you need to do to try to get stronger, you're making sure you push yourself and you're driving – driving up your levels of intensity to, to get more, to increase your engine, to get in better shape, then you're going to be pretty confident going into a competition. Mm-hmm. But it's when you don't, it's where you start to doubt yourself. But I mean, like deep down inside, you know how hard you've been working. No one else may know. They may not see it because they may not see you every day or they just don't know how hard you're actually working, but you know. And so when you know, when you know that you've been pushing it and working really hard, you're going to be confident. So yeah. the mental side, I think, follows the physical side of it. And, um, and so, yeah, but even with that, you know, you've got those workouts right there, so it's something for you to work for. Mm-hmm. You're just there. And so you have the opportunities to train and prepare and get ready for it. So then when you show up, you're ready to go. Ready to roll. Yeah. Is there anything else about local competitions that may – have a negative uh, aspect to them? Um, doing too many of them, you know, because like I said, there are several of them to come around. I know, you know, we'll touch on this in a second. There, you know, some competitions coming up and like back to back to back weeks, mm-hmm. and it's just not a good idea to be doing that, you yep. know? Um, kind of wear yourself thin. Yeah, because if you, like you were saying, you know, the workouts are announced usually beforehand, and so people, you're not going to get fitter in a week, mm-hmm. you know, not when it comes to getting ready for a competition. Yeah. So most people even like start to taper down and they don't work out as hard because they want to be ready to go full throttle at the competition. Yeah. And then there's a recovery period after mm-hmm. that. And so if you look at, you know, you're doing a competition every other week. So you're basically spending a week of tapering, a week of recovering, a week of tapering, recover, compete. There's no training going on in that time. So yeah. you can actually get worse. Yeah, and that, it even applies to the CrossFit season. Like, there's a reason why the Open is in, you know, February, March. Uh-huh. Then you've got a break before the athletes go into regionals. Yep. And then you've got a little bit of a break before they move into the games. Exactly. And then, of course, there's some of the larger competitions that space themselves out mm-hmm. so that they know that they're going to get the best out of the athletes as well. So, right. like, I mean, you have to think there's a reason why that's applied there, so why not apply it to yourself right. as well? Yeah. Like, it's the weekend warrior. I mean, I've, I've seen some people that they take um, – They'll use local competitions as part of their training. Mm-hmm. You know, like if, especially some of the more some of the more well known athletes that know that their main priority is the open regionals and games. You know, then they'll take the the weekend comp- local competitions. It's just a way to get in some volume mm-hmm. during the week, and and that's how they approach it. You know, yep. they're not they're not doing anything special to get ready for. It's just another piece of their training. But for the most for most of us. Like, these local competitions are our regionals. Yeah. They are our games. So we take them a lot more serious. And that's why we shouldn't be doing so many of them. Because if you do too many competitions, you spend most of your time competing, you're not going to get a whole lot of training in, and you're going to see that your uh, performance is going to start to slip. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So (laughs) I guess to wrap this up, you you had mentioned that there are some local competitions coming up. So, like, what are some of the ones that we – that we could attend. Um, so there's the Summer Swole Mates that's coming up in Prattville. I can't remember. I think the date on that is June 16th. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a co-ed, two-man co-ed, male-female competition, RX and scale. I think it's four workouts that they're going to have. And, um, and, I mean, a bunch of us went to that one last year, and it ended up being a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Prattville's a close drive, so you don't have to worry about getting a hotel 
for spending the night or anything like that. So that's one that we could look at. And then our buddies down at CrossFit Embrace are doing theirs. It's called um, Embrace the Gauntlet. I think it's June 23rd. Okay. And that one's going to be three-man team, same sex. So it's another good opportunity to, you know, get some teams together and drive down to Dothan yeah, again. Yeah, both, both are within driving distance. Yeah, not too far, so you don't have to worry about spending the night, getting a hotel or anything like that. Super easy. And then I know there's there's one more. It's a, oh, up in Coleman. I can't remember what they're going to call it, but in Coleman, that's a little further. It's a little further of a drive, but it's around, I think it's the week of 4th of July. Okay. Yeah, so, that's right. Just a couple opportunities right there to, to get out. And, you know, I'm sure that we'll end up, you know, getting trying to get a group together to go to one, yeah. if not a couple of those. Mm-hmm. So, so some good opportunities to get out and test that fitness. All right. I think that pretty much wraps us up for today. I think so. All right. Thanks, guys. That was episode 12 of the All In CrossFit podcast. It's Chris. I'm Jared. Be sure to like, subscribe, share. We appreciate y'all tuning in, and the subscribe will be here. Last week's video right here. We'll catch y'all later. Boom. See ya.